Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. What a wonderful morning to gather together as the sun is breaking through the rain clouds and we are joined together just with the joy of this Easter morning. I'm Reverend Linda Tice and I am so glad to be worshiping with you. And for our friends at home, we are so glad that you're worshiping with us as well. It is important that we are all one as one body and that on this day, this great glorious resurrection day, that we gather together in spirit or in body and just celebrate this wonderful day. So welcome to all of you. If you're visiting with us, we're especially glad that you're here, and I hope you'll stop and let me know where you're from and a little bit about you. Um, love to get to know you a little bit. A um, few announcements. The Continental Breakfast is available after worship. There's a lot of food still, so go on into Haley Hall and just uh, grab a plate and sit and relax and enjoy um, being together and just sharing in each other's company. I, I do want to let you know that there is a very special thing that is happening here at the church. In two weeks, on April 23rd, we are going to be having a celebration for our 23rd anniversary. No, excuse me, not 20, 75th anniversary. Follow the, follow the sign over there, not my words. <laughs> it is going to be a great day. This is a day that we have picked to, to come together and celebrate. It is a day that we're going to remember the past. We're going to talk about where we are now and the present and get excited about where we're going in the future. It will be a great day of worship with one service at 1030. And everybody is welcome. This isn't just something for if you've been a member of the church for a long time. This is if you have just started coming to the church. This is a great thing to come and get to know the church and get to know people. Um, we will be, follow the worship service with a dinner on the ground. So there'll be a big tent set up over here out on the side and we'll have tables set up and we have free barbecue and free uh, Sonny's dinner so you can't beat that and there'll be a bounce house and a slide for the kids so that they can have some fun too this is just a time we want to get together we're inviting all of our neighbors our preschool everybody that has been impacted by this church and this neighborhood we want it to be just a joyous celebration as we give glory to god for all that we have had and excitement about where we are going so i hope you will put it on your calendar invite your friends and come and just be a part of this great day well speaking of celebrating are you ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ? This is our day to join together, to join our voices, and to celebrate he is risen. Please rise as you're able. On this Easter Sunday, our call to worship is a most excellent one. We are people of the word, and today that word is Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We are people of the world, and today that world is in need of peace and a risen Savior. We are people of grace, and today that grace is to be shared so that all may know the power of resurrection for everyone. We are people of worship, and today that worship is offered in a spirit of humility and gratitude. Today is a day of celebration. We raise our voices in joy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please remain standing. Our opening hymn is an Easter medley. Oh, 
please remain standing for our affirmation of faith. It's the Apostles' Creed, number 881, in your hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born by the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and setteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
You ever wonder who came up with eggs and bunnies to uh, celebrate Easter? Kind of a contradiction in terms, isn't it? I mean, I guess I could Google who did it, but who wants to work that hard? <laughs> whoa, whoa, all right, oh, we're doing this now, okay. All right. And to be honest, I don't really care who came up with it because there is something just a little bit magical about popping open one of these eggs, am I right? I mean, anything can be in here. A toy, candy, money. And then occasionally, you have the unfortunate look of finding the empty one. Maybe an empty egg is a better symbol for Easter than a full one. Okay, take the very first Easter morning, all right? Uh, we have hindsight as our benefit, but Jesus' disciples, that they, they were so confused of what was going on. They didn't even have a clue. <laughs> okay, so Mary Magdalene, she gets to the tomb first, and she goes inside, and what does she see? It's empty. She is completely distressed. So she runs to John and Peter, and they go to the tomb, and what do they see? <laughs> empty. Empty is a, uh, a negative word, isn't it? My stomach is empty. The gas tank is empty. The house, since the kids left, it's empty. Empty just feels like disappointment. And on that very first Easter morning, nobody knew the word empty better than Jesus' followers. They had empty hearts, and they had empty hope. I got you, buddy. You see, the thing about Jesus, he takes empty things and he fills them. Empty tombs become resurrected miracles. Empty hearts get filled with love and empty hope overflows with everlasting purpose. Yes, Jesus specializes in empty. Here you go, buddy. Jesus emptied himself for our sake, that we may be filled with love meant to save the world. I don't know about you, but nowadays when it seems like we wake up and we are more isolated, alone, empty. But maybe this Easter, between all the eggs and the bunnies and the beans and every other activity, can I ask you a question? Will you allow Jesus to come into your emptiness. Oh Lord, on this day, a day of celebration, we search our souls those empty places in our life, the places that feel dark or closed in, where we feel trapped by aspects of life that we have no control over. And yet on this day, you invite us to walk into the light to let your light shine through any darkness in our lives, through open doors. You let us know that change is possible, that your loving grace is given to each of us, each of us to accept, to use, to embrace, and to know that we are your children and people of worth. Oh Lord, I pray on this Easter day that each person here, that their heart is open to you. You know what everybody is going through. You know the tears in their heart, the fear, the pain, the grief, the loneliness. 
you also know those times of joy that make us, each of us, want to draw closer and closer to you. We thank you for being our Savior, for the gift of mercy and forgiveness, and for loving us just the way we are. As we go forward from this day, Lord, change us, because we know through the resurrection that all things are possible. Show us where you want us to be working, where you want us to share your love and acceptance with others. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit will fall on each person here, that they truly feel your presence, your hope, and your promise of things to come. I pray for this church that we can be your ambassadors of love in this world, can offer grace and love and forgiveness to all people. Show us where we need to, to step it up, where we need to go boldly forward in proclaiming Jesus Christ as our risen Lord. On this day, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us and for this day of joy to remind us that your love goes on and on. And it is with the confidence of knowing your presence in our life that we join our voices together to pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On his precious head they placed a crown of thorns they laughed and said behold your king they struck him 
and cursed him and mocked his holy name. All alone he suffered everything. Thank you, gentlemen. Would you pray for me as I pray for you? Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful. Open our hearts and our minds to receive the particular message that you have for each of us today. And I pray, Lord, that the words I say are not my own, but are yours. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the book of John. It is the Easter story that, that we are reminded of over and over again. As the story begins, we're told how the women go to the tomb expecting to find Jesus' body. And when they arrive there, the tomb has been rolled away and the tomb is empty. There are only the bed clothes, the cloths that he had worn, his head folded gently on, this t on the tomb. And the women were startled and surprised and they ran to the disciples and they told them, he's gone. Our Lord is gone. The tomb is empty. And the disciples ran back to see for themselves and they walked in and felt the emptiness. And then they returned back to their home in Galilee. But the women stayed beside the tomb. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, 
Why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that what he had said, and these things she held close, these things that he said to her. The joy of this day is amazing, amen? It is a wonderful day. We can't say Happy Easter without a big smile on our face. Try it. It won't work. You have to have that big smile when you say Happy Easter. And we're all tuned in. When I say, the Lord is risen, we all respond. And you have smiles. I see it. We see the smiles of the children as they were doing their egg hunt. It is just a joyous day where we feel the presence of the risen Lord. But what about tomorrow? What about later? Will that smile still be on our face? Will we still say, I know what this day means and that it has changed me? What will we do with this day? Do you really understand what it means to you? There was a professor at a small college and he struggled with teaching his students that very thing. He had the privilege of teaching the incoming freshmen the required basic Christianity course that they were all required to take. Now, as you can imagine, it wasn't really a popular thing on their schedule. They were going through the drudgery of this class, not really wanting to understand Christianity, not really excited about what they were learning, but just to do it, to check off that class on their schedule so that they could pass on. And the professor, his name was Professor Christensen of all things. He got really frustrated with day in and day out seeing this, this lack of interest. And even more than that, this lack of understanding what Christianity was about. And so, one semester, he decided to do something different. He had a, a special guy in his class. His name was Steve. Steve was the all-American guy. He was the guy that everybody loved. He was handsome, he was popular, he was a good athlete, he was a center on the school's football team, and he was a good student. He was one of the best students, actually he was the best student in the professor's class. He had a heart for Christianity and he had already made it known that after he finished undergraduate school, he was going to go on to seminary and study in ministry. So one day, Professor Christensen asked him to stay after class. And he began talking with him and he said, I have this idea, but I need your help. How many push-ups can you do? 
Well, I do 200 every night. Hmm. Could you do 300? Well, I've never done 300, but I certainly can try. And so the professor, Steve, talked, and he shared his, his plan with him. The next Friday in class, the professor walked in with t several large boxes of the best donuts in town. They were the kind that were elaborate and gooey, and everybody loved them. You couldn't resist them. And the students got all excited, because who doesn't like a party? And they got excited. And so the professor took the first box, and he walked over to the first row, and he said, Cindy, would you like a donut? Oh, yes, professor, I would. And he turned to Steve. Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so Cindy could have a donut? And he jumped up and quickly did 10 push-ups and sat back down. And the professor gave Cindy a donut. And he went to the next student. Jim, would you like a donut? Absolutely. Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so that Jim could have a donut? And Steve did the push-ups. And he proceeded down the first aisle asking each person if they wanted a donut and having Steve do 10 push-ups for them so that they could receive their donut. Then he started down the second aisle. Well, somewhere in there, there was a guy named Hank. And Hank was also a good athlete. In fact, he was on the basketball team. And so when the professor asked him if he would like a, a donut, he said, yes, but I'll do my own push-ups. And the professor looked at him and said, no, Steve has to do them. And he said, well, why does he have to do them? I can do them. And he got a little mad. And the professor looked at him and said, my classroom, my class, my donuts, my rules. Steve has to do the push-ups for you. Well, then I don't want one. And the press said, okay. And he turned to Steve. Steve, would you do 10 push-ups for, um, for Hank, even though he doesn't want the donut? And he said yes, and he did the 10 push-ups. And Hank said, I said I didn't want it. That's okay. You don't have to eat it but it's yours, and he put it on the desk. And he proceeded down the second row. By the end of the second row, Steve was getting a little tired, and he sort of stayed on the ground in between each of the put sets of push-ups. So then he came to the third row. And he, at that point, the class was getting a little uneasy. They, were, they didn't like what was going on. And he asked Jenny, would you like a donut? And she said a loud, emphatic, no. And he turned to um, Steve and said, Steve, would you do 10 push-ups so that she can have a donut that she doesn't want? And that continued. And they continued down the row. And at one point, the professor asked um, Robert, who was very clear and vocal in his um, non-belief in Christianity, he asked him if he would watch Steve to make sure that he was counting and doing the right number of push-ups. The truth was, the professor couldn't watch him struggle with them anymore. Because as he got toward the end of that row, his face was red, his arms were red. As he did the push-ups, there was a pool of sweat on the floor. So he turned to the fourth row. And as he got to the fourth row, 
he realized that other students had started coming into the class. They knew something was going on there, and so students from outside had started to drift into the class, and there were extra students sitting under the windows on the radiator. And the professor counted quickly and realized there were 34 students now, and he wasn't sure that Steve was going to be able to finish what he had started. So he continued down, and, and more and more people were saying no, that they didn't want one, and there were more and more donuts being left on the desk uneaten. At one point, Jason came to the door and started to come in, and the whole class shouted, no, don't come in. And he was rather startled. But Steve quietly said, no, let him come in. And the professor said to Steve, you know if he comes in, you're going to have to do push-ups for him so that he can have a donut. And he said, give him a donut as he did those push-ups. By that point, his arms were shaking, and the only sound that could be heard was his labored breathing. They continued around the room and finally came to the last person, the last student. And as he asked Susan, would you like a donut? She had tears running down her face. And she said to the professor, why can't I help him? And with tears in his own eyes, the professor said, when I decided to have this party, Steve had told me that in football, when people make mistakes, that they have to do push-ups to rectify their mistakes. And when I looked at my class role, there was only one student who had perfect grades, who hadn't missed any class, and that was Steve. The rest of you had skipped classes, had failed tests, and turned in inferior work. The only way that we could have this party was if Steve agreed to do your push-ups for the mistakes you had made. And with that, Steve did the last 10 push-ups, and Susan received her donut on the desk. The professor turned to everybody and his students. And he said, our Lord Savior died on the cross to pay the price for our sins, for our mistakes. And like in today, each one of you have been given an opportunity, an opportunity to receive grace. What you do with it is up to you. But he has paid the price so that you can receive that donut. At that point, several students helped Steve up into a chair, and he was exhausted. The professor went on. He says, it is my hope for each one of you that you may understand and fully comprehend the riches of the grace and the mercy that Jesus paid the price 
so that you may receive. Whether or not you choose to accept it is up to you. But it is my prayer for each one of you that you will. Each one of us has been invited to the celebration called Easter. We are here because Jesus has paid the price for us to be part of this wonderful day of joy, a day of resurrection, a day of hope. Each one of us has been given grace, that unconditional love and acceptance that Jesus died on the cross to give to each one of us. What do we do with that donut of grace that is placed in front of each one of us today? What does it mean to you that Jesus paid the price for you and that you have this opportunity of renewal and resurrection in your life. This opportunity that change is possible through the risen Lord. That your sins have been paid for. And that we have new life, each one of us. That's the meaning of resurrection that new life is possible for each one of us. Maybe you feel like you've been in a dark place, in that tomb. Maybe life has just not gone the way you expect it. Maybe there's depression and anxiety. Maybe there's um, a loss, grief in your life. Maybe you have plans going this way and life has taken you this way. The hope that we all have, that no matter how many mistakes we made, how many things that we do wrong, over and over and over, should I add a few more overs? Over and over? That's who we are. But because we celebrate this day, we have new possibilities and can make a change. And it isn't just a change that we make for us, but through us, we touch other lives. Just like the women at the tomb, as they saw the resurrection and felt the joy and the transformation that, from where they were to the joy, then they go in out and shared it with other people. And it's that joy that just spreads like a ripple out into the world. Each one of us has been given that gift what does it mean to you? And what are you going to do with it? I don't know about you, but I think that is really something to be joyful about. Amen? Because Jesus lives, we have the promise of hope and life and love and so many possibilities. Because Jesus lives, we can go out and know that all things are possible. That, that, my friends, is worth celebrating. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, we thank you for the celebration of this day for all that you have done to bring us to this point in our lives. And we know that you call us to change 
and to draw closer to you and to have our relationship with you make a difference in people that we meet. We thank you for forgiving us, for loving us just as we are, and helping us to be the people you call us to be. So Lord, may this be a day of renewal, a day of glorious hope, As we know, because you live, we have a glorious life in front of us that you call us to live as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You may have a, a urge right now for a donut. <laughs> so I made sure that the ladies had donuts in our continental breakfast. So there, please go over and join us in Haley and just have a relaxing time and, and have a donut and other good things as well. Would you place your hand on your heart? We're not going to say the Pledge of Allegiance but we're going to remember that this is where Christ lives, in our hearts. And in our hearts is a love that grows and changes us 
and then we take it and we throw it out and share it with all we meet. So on this Easter day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace this day and forevermore. And let's go and share the love and the grace and just shout that Jesus is alive. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter.